Well, there we have it. Uh, Walmart being allowed uh, to actually progress through in uh, Namibia with the uh, merger deal with uh, MassMart specifically. Do we take this as being a done and dusted deal because here in South Africa, Walmart and MassMart are also awaiting judgments on appeals from the South African government, which are seeking to attach more conditions to the transaction. Yes, well, uh, you know, Walmart came here as a result of that measure. They're not, but they came here directly. Mm -hmm. It's because MassMart has uh, subsidiaries here, and that's how they came in here. We were proactive in trying to put some conditions, knowing the footprints of Walmart in the world, that is a big operation and it can easily destroy the local market. So we are proactive in trying to put conditions. And then we went to courts. Of course, we lost the first round. We went to the Supreme Court. We won the case in the sense that it was sent back to the minister to make his determination, mm -hmm. which I have given yesterday. Determination dealing with, again, no losses of work uh, uh, for the workers who are already there in two years' time, and also to re accept the recognized labor unions. But the third point was very, very important, that we have to put up a program jointly that will help the small and medium enterprises so that they can also access that market. That's in short what we have decided on. It's interesting. I, Namibian side, it's a done deal. Yeah. It's interesting, uh, Minister, that uh, you've decided uh, on this uh, stance. And, uh, you know, the market's at this stage questioning why the divergence from the South African government's thinking, because we've got similar conditions already imposed, but the government's looking to attach more conditions to that $2.4 billion deal. Yes, uh, South Africa, in fact, you are the culprits. <laughs> we are just uh, victims of that. So it's good that action is taken there because the deal is uh, in South Africa. We are just suffering because we always we have subsidiaries here, and that's how we become part of it. But it's good that they can put some stringent uh, conditions there. That's good. So Ulmer is coming there, not here. Where you say, uh, you know, it's, uh, you've, you're suffering on that end, I mean, to what extent was this a hard sell from a social perspective, Minister? Public interest considerations have caused quite a stir with the trade unions on our side. Yes, indeed. Uh, we were trying to act in the public interest. You know, unemployment in Namibia is already so high. And we don't want somebody to come here and lay off workers who are already there on job. That was our main concern, a public interest kind of issue. Then secondly, our trade unions are part and parcel uh, of our system. The recognition agreements have been entered into and they must be recognized as such. Mm -hmm. And then small and medium enterprises are very important to us. Now we couldn't impose to them to put the money aside and so on. We had negotiations and we agreed that there must be a program that must be implemented in 12 months' time. With the approval, consultation and approval of the Ministry of Trade and Industry. As you've highlighted, unemployment is sitting pretty high over in Namibia. It's sitting at 51% right now. So on the flip side, let's take a look at the economic benefits of a transaction like this for a country like Namibia, Minister. Well, Namibia is an open economy. We go around invite, inviting investors to come to Namibia, saying Namibia is an investor-friendly country. So we cannot at one point now say come, and next point we say don't come. That's why we are saying the companies coming here must create a win-win situation. Namibians must also benefit, not just to come and rip, take the resources and go out, as the mining sector is doing. So this being a retail institution, I thought we should put some conditions. It is dealing with the small people's pockets, their jobs and so on, their bread actually. So we agreed on having a program that they have already implemented in Costa Rica and so on, where they develop their small and medium enterprises. Has government created enough incentive to foster business growth in Namibia? We have done that. We have done that. Namibia is one of the countries known as the best place 
to do business in, in Africa. Let's take a look we at why and some of those initiatives that you've actually rolled out. I beg your pardon? Let's take a look at why and some of the initiatives that uh, you have rolled out to make Namibia a better place to do business in. Oh, first is the investment climate. We have first peace and democracy here, uh, freedom and security for investors. Uh, there are tax, uh, tax breaks also given, although we are reviewing that. Uh, but mostly, our investors come for resources. When they come for resources, we don't have to give them really any incentives. They come for resources. So there's a mineral-based economy, and that's how uranium companies come here. They were looking for win-win situation. They shouldn't just come and extract. They must add value to our resources. The problem of Africa is they just come and grab and go out. But let's add value. That way we transfer technology and create jobs. So within that context then, Minister, when it comes to FDI flows, what, uh, what have you managed to be raking in and what is your target uh, when it comes to foreign direct investment into Namibia? Well, at the moment, last year was about four billion US dollars, but that is basically based on mining sector, really. We are getting mining sector as a main one attracting investors who are coming. And tourism sector is the fastest grow growing one. And therefore, we have reached now about one million mark of tourists coming here for a small country. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. And also service industry we want to create here because value is not added here in this country. We don't have skills, so that way we have to allow investors to come, but they must set up a win-win situation. They must set up some, some training programs and so on, so that we can train our people, technology must be built up and so on, and that's why we are weak. When it comes to governance institutions, we score very high, but we don't do uh, well when it comes to education, skills and so on. We want investors to come and help us with that one. And in terms of uh, you helping investors, uh, when it comes to the red tape scenario, we know that Namibia has been associated with uh, too much red tape for new investors. Is that becoming less of a complex scenario to navigate around? Yes, that is my task. I, I know it's a problem, but definitely the ministry is busy. We tell all investors to get in touch with us. We help them, we clear them, we can register the company. We are trying to make the registration period to be about a few days. But to do business depends on other institutions, like Home Affairs and so on. So we are talking to all of them that there must be no, no, no barriers, tariff, non-tariff barriers. Like when a person comes to the airport, I tell a joke about immigration officer asking a person who is coming from Germany, oh, I came to invest in your country. He's asked, what's wrong in your country? <laughs> so that to create an investor-friendly uh, <laughs> investor uh, environment. And my ministry is determined to be an interface between an investor and the Namibian government. Well, and they must be in touch with my ministry if there are problems. Well, best of luck to you, Minister. Certainly developments and progress that we'll be keeping an eye on. So thanks so much for your uh, insights and for joining us this afternoon. That, of course, uh, Hager Gaingob, who's the Namibian Minister of Trade and Industry.